amigas, chicas, friends for life, there for each other, that's what makes us tight. No? Just me? Okay. Greetings, beautiful earthlings. If you do not know me already, my name is Star. Hello, nice to meet you. Um, this isn't my normal background or setting. I've just been doing this for the past couple of days because it's, it's more comfortable to sit on my bed, to be completely honest. So say hello to Stitch, Angel, uh, Wicket, and the gang. And um, today we're going to be going over something I've actually gone over in a video before, but... You know, it's always a good refresher for people who are new to my channel or people who might stumble across it in the future. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I've learned a little bit more about this subject um, since the last time that I made this video. And I feel like it might be a little bit more helpful for me to retouch on the subject. So what we're going to be going over today um, is going to be kind of how to read your very basic three card spread but this is going to have a little bit of a twist this is not me telling you how to read your three card spread explicitly right i'm not going to tell you which position is which i'm not going to tell you how you should read it i'm not going to tell you what questions you should ask that's not my business okay that's your business as a reader that is your business to figure out with your deck with your guides with your team if you're reading for yourself if you're reading for others please 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 do not just pick up a deck pull out three cards and go what do because this is the thing that i see most common across facebook groups and i have told you guys this many 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 times um i frequent tarot groups on facebook i'm just kind of a lurker because I like to see what questions people are asking. Um, in my downtime sometimes, I'll go through those groups and just kind of uh, answer bomb a bunch of questions because it's fun. Um, but sometimes there's also some that will actually like spark enough of something within me to want to do a video about it. So this one that got me the other day was somebody asking, you know, here's my, my three cards for the day and I don't understand what this means. And I see this so many times and this honestly is like why I stopped being in Facebook tarot groups for a little while because it's so frustrating to see every single person every single day saying what do what does my daily spread mean what do these cards mean that's not I'm not trying to be mean I'm not trying to be rude okay so you know I just kind of slowly backed away I was like you do your thing someone will answer that I, I have to do that all the time to like remind myself it's not my place I don't have to answer every single one of those right um but every once in a while one of them's like really good where I'm like there's something here um, where the people will be like, I asked this question, these are the positions in the spread, this is what I got from the reading, this is what I interpret it as, and I feel like there's something else missing here. Um, those, those ones, I really love those ones because they already did the work, right? They already gave me all of the backstory, I don't have to ask them questions because I say this all the time, the most important thing about being a reader is what you interpret from the cards and what you interpret from the energy in the moment because it's more about how you are reading the energy how you are interpreting the cards um, as reflecting that energy and how your guides are telling you to interpret those cards and energy in the moment right um, so that's why I don't answer the ones that are like here's three cards what does this mean because that's literally that could mean anything 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 in any sense in any which way and you're gonna get so 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 many different responses to that so i'm gonna start off by saying for those those of you who are beginners brand new beginners and you stumble across this video and you want to understand how to interpret your three card spread i want to say first the easiest thing to do is to pick your placements pick your placements, establish your placements first with yourself or with your guides. Okay. I don't know how you read. If you're reading with your guides, they will help you with your placements. If you're just reading for yourself, just learning how to read, establish your placements first. So in a three card spread, you have endless placements, right? It could be past, present, future. It could be situation, obstacle, outcome, things like that. Um, the way that my guides personally like to use a three card spread at the beginning of a reading is the way that Baba Jolie uses it or used to use it. 
um, which is antagonist, protagonist, unified. Okay, so let me pull three cards here and show you. So for you, woo, beautiful cards. Okay, so for you personally, you're probably looking at it this way. This would be antagonist, protagonist, unified. So what this would mean is that this is the energy that's working against you in the current moment. That's what antagonist means. Um, this is the energy that's working for your highest good in the moment. That's what protagonist means. And this is the energy combined that they are producing, if that makes sense. Again, disclaimer, let's take a breath. You do not have to read your three card spread in this manner. I'm just using this as an example because this is what I'm most comfortable with using the three card spread as, okay? So first thing to do in your three card spread is establish the placements of each card. Very important. Second thing I always recommend, read your bottom card, okay? Don't take your bottom card for granted. You should always, always, always flip your deck after you pull your cards, whether these cards flew out at you or you pulled them, okay? I don't care if you pulled them from the top or the bottom. Look at your bottom card at the end of you pulling these cards. It's important. Some readers will read this as the energy you don't see coming. Some readers will read this as the overall energy of the spread. Some readers will read this as the energy within you as you're pulling the spread. Again, however it resonates for you, this is the most important thing in reading tarot is learning what works for you in these moments. And that's why the best thing you can do as a beginner reader is to just keep doing it. Just keep reading for yourself, for friends, for family, for random strangers on the internet. Get your practice. Because the only way to learn what three card spread works the best for you, how you interpret the energy, what the bottom card means to you, the only way to do that is to keep doing it, okay? So again, I usually let my guides tell me what these cards mean because I'm extremely connected to my guides, my ancestors, my deities, my spirit guides. I can tap into the other person's spirit guides and deities, things like that in a reading. If you cannot do that and you are reading very basically just reading the cards to help you understand the energy don't worry about all that okay just read the cards but make sure you establish your placements first that is so crucial because otherwise you're just reading these with no direction essentially you're driving on a dirt road if you're not reading this with a spread you're driving on a dirt road there's no lines there's no lanes there's no traffic lights there's no stop signs there's no people there's nothing in sight no direction you are just driving okay um, if you have your placements established first you're driving within the lines you're doing it safely you're on the road you know where you're going you know what you're doing all you have to do is take each turn the way you're supposed to and follow your follow your traffic laws okay i hope that makes sense <laughs> so the reason that i wanted to talk about this today is because i've started watching a lot of steve's love tarot i had said this a couple of videos ago and steve has actually said some things in a lot of his videos that helped me personally as a reader really switch up the way that i was reading because a lot of people when you first start reading are taught to read this as a sentence Again, like I said, if you're not reading within placements, you are driving on a dirt road. You can read this as a sentence forward, backwards, upside down, flip-flop. You can read it this way. You can read it that way. You're driving on a dirt road with no laws. Hence why people tell you to read it as a sentence, to give it some kind of structure where there is no structure, right? The way that Steve taught me to read this. I'm going to say taught me even though I didn't personally talk to Steve. This is how he coaches readers, okay? He says read it middle, left, right. Clearly he has his own spread as well, okay? So he's got his placements established, but when he's using his three cards for clarification, he says read it middle, left, right. And this blew my mind because I did read cards like that and I was told that's not right. And there is no right and wrong in tarot, right? This is just me giving you advice on what has helped me personally as a reader learn to interpret something that should be easy, right? A three card spread should be easy, but a lot of people make it way more complicated than it needs to be. 
So let me tell you what Steve said, which helps me so, so very much. You're reading this as middle, left, right. So the energy that you need to pay attention to first is this one, your middle card. This is the energy that is most important in your three card spread. This is the one that is um, your main character. These are your supporting characters. They are book ending your main character. They are sandwiching that middle card. So you read this one first to see what's in the middle of the sandwich and then you see what the, the pieces of bread are made out of. Okay. I'm using a lot of analogies. I hope I'm not losing anybody. Um, but if we were using this as antagonist, protagonist, unified, it would look a little bit more different than reading protagonist, antagonist, unified. Because reading it from the middle is going to help you a little bit more positively. Even if you're reading it in a position such as um, past, present, future, right? Instead of starting with your past, like a lot of people will, start with your future and say, I mean, start with your present and say how the present is being affected by the past and how the present is being affected by the future. And then just the present energy by itself, right? It makes a lot more sense to read this card by itself in relation to this card in relation to this card, in relation to both of them together, and then again by itself. You're getting a lot more bulk out of that reading. You're getting a lot more substance and you are getting a lot more context, okay? This has helped me exponentially with my readings lately. It makes me feel like I understand the reading so much more because when I was reading it, da 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 da, Again, I felt like I was missing something. So to have that person on my Facebook page say, I feel like I'm missing something. I read it, right? I analyzed it. I read the whole thing. I, I even read, you know, my bottom card and I read the top card and I pulled a card on the cut. I still feel like I'm missing something. I feel like that's why. And I feel like it's very important for us as readers to understand that you get more substance by bouncing around the reading rather than just do 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 da okay i don't know if that makes sense it makes perfect sense to me it made so much sense the second steve said it and i immediately applied it to um readings that i had lined up that week and it just changed so much um again because i'm personally a channeler I'm a medium, um, so I'm always translating the energy first of what I feel, what I hear, and using the cards to back them up. So being able to use the cards to back them up with so much more context moving about the spread helps like crazy, especially if you're somebody who is a more advanced tarot reader who's going to throw clarifiers on top of this, right? Um, if you guys have ever seen me read, I know some of you have paid for readings with me, um, so you've seen me read, I'll pull the three cards first as antagonist, protagonist, unified. And I will read that energy first as fully as I possibly can with those three cards by itself. Then I will throw clarifiers on top of each card. And again, I will read the clarifiers with this card specifically in this position, this card specifically in this position, and then read it as a whole with all of those clarifiers. And then I will throw more clarifiers on top of that um, to get, you know, final messages, final clarification, things like that. So, um, I think I was able to cover the advice that I wanted to give, which was first, I mean, first, 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 very first before all of this, bond with your deck, please, kids. Don't, don't come to me and say you just bought a deck brand new, you opened it and you can't figure out why you can't read with it. Bond with your deck. I shouldn't have to tell you that. Um, you guys already know I've been doing this for quite a while, so sorry if I, if I have exasperated energy around things like that. Um, but it happens. I have people telling me I just opened my deck and I tried to interview it and nothing makes sense. Why? Because you need to bond with your deck, baby. You need to clear it. You need to cleanse it. You need to cleanse yourself. You need to cleanse your space. You need to bond with your deck. You need to do a lot of bonding with your deck before you try to read with it. Please don't interview it right out of the box. It drives me freaking banana sandwich when people do that. 
doesn't make any sense to me but I am also the type of person that feels like you should have a bond with your deck to read with it silly me right not everybody thinks that way so um next what I wanted to talk about as far as beginner tips with reading tarot is something else that I do in a reading that I don't see a lot of people talking about um, when teaching tarot but they do show it when reading tarot okay and that's gonna be your top card your bottom card and cards on the cut so you'll see people will you know pull out their three cards right and they're reading with their three cards and then you know after they read their three cards they'll look at their bottom card what does this card say and then they'll do this and they'll look at their top card and they'll go okay 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 oh okay 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 they'll get a little picture here with their top cards right and then they'll look at their bottom cards and they'll get a little picture there with their bottom cards and then they'll look they'll do this oh okay yeah oh okay okay oh okay okay and then they'll get more of a picture and then start reading with it and I feel like nobody explains to beginners why that is we just do it and we do it out of comfort habit right it's just something you do when you're in the throes of reading you don't even think about it and I know I do it um, <laughs> again it's throes of passion you're in the middle of reading and that's just what you do so when you have your three cards like I said people will read the bottom of the deck as either what you don't see coming the overall energy or whatever whatever right XYZ put put your position here very important put your position here make sure you establish what this is with yourself with your guides with your deck okay most importantly with your deck because your deck is the one that's going to get inside of your brain and is going to work off of how you read okay so establish this with your deck what you think this position means the bottom of the deck so if you're reading the bottom of the deck as things you don't see coming when you move this card this is going to be the energy that is under this one these are the energies that are either playing off of this one or contributing to this one feeding off of this one adding to it things like that so the reason that readers will take your bottom card and then flip the deck and take the top card sometimes is because you can read this as what you don't see coming energies that are hidden from you right things that are in your blind spot and then you can take this one as things that are affecting you directly things that are affecting your energy things that will be affecting whatever is going on in your reading okay again you have to work that out with your deck with your guides very very important like I can't stress that enough I don't want anyone coming for me in the next couple of years saying that's not what that position means because that position means something different for everyone okay I want to make that very clear these positions mean something different for any everyone but I want to also make it clear that you have these options okay because no one told me as a beginner that I had these options that I could bounce around a three card reading that I could add cards to a three card reading that I could be holding my deck and shuffling during a three card reading nobody tells you you have options honey it's your deck it's your cards you have the option to do whatever you want to do with these cards while you're reading your spread okay so after you read your bottom and your top if you decide to do that to add context or bulk to your your spread a lot of readers will just randomly pull things on the cut and take messages from that I've seen people do that and I do that and the reason that we do that is for the same basic principle that when you are reading tarot cards the card that is meant to come out the message that is meant to come out will come out okay so that's why we'll do that to back up whatever it is we're saying because oftentimes you'll be talking through your reading as you should be right if you're reading for someone else clearly if you're reading for yourself you could very well not be talking but when I read for myself I do it on video you guys don't know this I've never published these videos but I do read for myself and I videotape it and I have my own little video log of all of my personal readings because it's the only way that I can make sense out of my readings so 
when you're pulling these, usually you'll be talking through your reading, talking through the energy that you feel, explaining your cards and your card positions and whatever. And while you're doing that, you'll get a random itch in the back of your brain to pull a card from the middle. And it is the same principle as with drawing tarot cards as with cards flying out of the deck. And the principle is that, which is the card that is meant to come out whatever message is meant to be heard will be heard at the right time so that's why people do that during a reading you'll see people do that and then they'll shuffle and they'll look at the bottom after they shuffle they'll look at the top after they shuffle they'll split a card after they shuffle and that is why for that exact reason just to back up whatever they're saying okay so i'm not gonna be the reader anymore to tell you guys you need to read the energy first you need to get in touch with the energy first i used to tell that to beginners and i realized that's really stressful to hear especially if you're just trying to learn tarot you're just trying to internalize your tarot meanings you're just trying to figure out what all of this stuff is you don't have a handle on energy reading yet i realize not everybody is energy readers not everybody's mediums not everybody's channelers okay so if you are just reading the cards, just trying to figure out the cards, the only thing I can tell you, the very easiest thing that I can say is, baby, sweetie, honey, they are your cards. Form a bond with your cards. Talk to your cards. Okay, I know I've said this um, for years. I don't know how long you've been around on my channel, right? You could be someone who's been watching since my first video or someone who is just stumbling on this video right now. But the best thing that I can tell you about reading tarot as a beginner, even as an intermediate person or someone who's coming back to tarot, form that bond with your cards. Talk to your cards. I used to tell you guys, don't touch your cards when you're going through a rough time, right? If you're emotional, don't grab your cards. Yes and no, okay? If you want to grab your cards and shuffle through them for comfort, by all means. I do it too, okay? Um, please don't ask your cards stupid questions. You can, right? It's your deck if you want to, um, but your cards are going to get real irritated and again, they're going to reflect that energy back to you. I've said that before and I stand by that because they do. But the only way you can bond with your deck is to spend time with it, to talk to it, to be real and honest and raw and vulnerable with it. If you are not vulnerable with anybody else in your life, listen to me right now, you be damn vulnerable with your deck. Do you hear me? You be as vulnerable and as naked and as human as possible with your deck. Because this is the one thing as a tarot reader, your deck should know how you read. Your deck should be able to work with you without you telling it how to work with it and the only way to get that bond with it is to spend time with it to establish your positions to establish this connection before you read for somebody else essentially so i have this coworker. we are so we are so damn in tune with each other that he can be across the room and say keys i'll turn around throw my keys and he will catch them no matter where we are I can be in the middle of a sentence with someone. He can be in the middle of a sentence with someone. I hear him from across the room say keys. I turn around, I throw the keys, he catches them. Don't even miss a beat. I keep talking to my customer. He keeps talking to his. And that is how you should be with your deck, okay? Your deck should be able to know exactly which position you are calling out before you call it out. Your deck should know exactly what each card means to you personally, okay? So if you are still learning your basic meanings of each cards the longer you spend time with these cards the more you will form a bond with which you have different meanings for these cards everybody does okay a lot of people will not tell you that because they don't want to steer you the wrong way as a beginner but everybody has different meanings for these cards because of the associations that they have with them the longer they spend time with them so even if you don't have a good old trusty Rider Waite Smith like I do, if you have one of those crazy cartoon tarot decks, right? Or some crazy dark tarot deck, something you're drawn to, something you connect with, and you sit there and you spend time with it every day for the next year. And every single one of those cards you relate, you relate to yourself, to your life in some way. You put a, 
a past memory on that card. You put a story on that card. You, you build a whole life for that card, right? Your deck will know that. Your deck will remember that and internalize that. And it will use what you put into that card the next time you're doing a reading. So the next time you are doing a reading and you get this card, you don't have to think about what the basic book definition is of that card. You can think of what you put into that card, what you relate to that card, how that card makes you feel and think and remember and all of that stuff. Because that is what your deck is putting into it. That's what your deck is encapsulating, is all of the stuff you are putting into it. So that's why I say it is so, so, so very important as a beginner to spend time with your deck all the time that you can. Even if you're mad and you're shuffling through it mad and you throw it against the wall, right? And then you pick it up and you cry and you say you're sorry and you, you shuffle it. I don't care what you do with your deck. Please spend time with your deck. It is the best thing that you can do for yourself as a tarot reader in the long run. If you have one deck that you beat up real bad, it's all frayed, it's all cut up, it's done 7,000 readings for you, and then you get a new one and you can't abandon that first one because of all the energy that's built into it, think about that. Genuinely, all of that time that you spent with that deck, all of that bonding, all of those memories, all of that gets stuck into that deck, okay? So all of that was real long-winded just to say Just to say that however you bond with your deck, your deck will remember. And it will use that information in a reading. So if you're just starting out and you're, you don't understand why spreads don't make sense to you, um, that is why. Spreads never made sense to me. I hated using spreads when I first started because I didn't realize it at the time. But it's because I was still learning tarot. I was still learning how I personally read and I was learning how to work with each of my decks. So don't worry about spreads early on. If it stresses you out, trying to learn more, don't do it. It's okay. No rules. There's no right and there's no wrong. But if spreads make sense to you to start with, to build a foundation, then do it. Either which way, I'm just here as someone who's been reading tarot for a couple of years on the interwebs to tell you beginners if you are here as a beginner please do what feels right to you okay i know people tell you that all over the place and i used to get really mad about it and i understand now why they say that okay before I used to be like, no, you have to start out with a Rider Waite Smith and you have to learn each card first and you have to learn this first and you have, to... no, that is gatekeeping BS. And someone put that in my head and that's why it was there. So listen to me for a second. <laughs> Take all of the gatekeepy stuff out of your head. Okay. Whatever somebody told you about what you have to do in tarot, bolded, underlined italics, you don't have to, okay? It's your deck, and the most important thing is you and you as a reader and your deck that you are reading with and your practice, okay? Because you are going to be doing your reading in your practice for the rest of your life, presumably, and those other people are not going to be there to tell you a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, that you're doing it wrong. The only thing that's going to be important in those moments is you and the bond you have built with your deck. Okay? So I really hope that that helped. It wasn't supposed to be that long, but I just see this so many times, so many different ways where people feel like there is a right or a wrong answer to reading tarot cards in a spread. And it drives me nuts because there is no right and there is no wrong. There are guidelines. And that's it. Each of these cards and their keywords, they are guidelines. That's it. They are just to help you along your journey to start building your foundation, to start on the road, right? You could start on the main road and you could drive on that highway as long as you want to drive on that highway. But one day you're going to go, man, 
screw this highway and you're going to want to drive on the dirt road, right? That's fine. There's no one around to tell you that you can't do it. It's you in the driver's seat driving your own car. Please be safe when driving actual automobiles. I shouldn't have to say that, but I know someone's going to be like, Star said I could drive off the highway into the dirt road and I did, damn it. So, <sighs> that was a lot. That was a lot more than I intended to throw in that video and I really hope that I did not confuse anybody. Every time I sit down to do this type of video, this happens where I throw way too many analogies into it and one thing weaves into another and it just gets real long. This is why my readings can span up to like two hours sometimes because it just gets just so much. So I really hope that I said some helpful things here <laughs> for beginners, for intermediate readers, for professional readers. Who cares? Um, I definitely recommend checking out Steve's Love Tarot if you guys haven't already. If you guys don't know who Steve is, I will link his channel in the description box for you because he is my favorite reader. I watch every single video he puts out. No matter what it is, I watch it because there's always invaluable information. He has his own blog, like so much stuff. And I feel like Steve's somebody that I personally look up to as a mentor right now, even though I don't know him, I've never talked to him. I feel like personally he is mentoring me the same way I feel like Baba Jolie mentored me as a reader, as a reader. And I've never met her either. I've never talked to her a day in her life. So um, just, I feel a very close connection to the way that Steve reads. And I wanted to share that with you guys that you can read from, I mean, you can learn from any reader if, you like them, you like their personal personality, you like the way that they read and they teach you something, feel free to use it in your practice. There's no reason that you can't, okay? There's no reason that you have to stick to what somebody teaches you when you first learn because I thought the same thing. I thought I had to stick to what I was taught and that if I was adding things or taking things away that I was abandoning myself as a reader and I was abandoning what I was taught and I was betraying myself as a reader and that's not true at all. So I really hope that helps somebody. And if you guys made it to the end, please give me a big old thumbs up. You know, that helps me out so very much. Don't forget to check out my link tree in the description box. You guys already know you can find all of my socials down there. And if you guys want me to go over anything else, any other questions that you guys have, um, I can almost guarantee I've already touched on everything I possibly can in a video, but it doesn't hurt for me to go over it with new eyes and try another crack at the video again um, because I, you know, I've learned so much in the past year or two and there's no reason that I can't redo the video, right, or try to add something to it. So if you guys have any requests about anything, as far as reading goes, you want me to touch on something, you want me to show you how I do it or how I make associations or how I've learned to do things, please, please, please don't ever hesitate to drop those comments below in this video, in any video, or if you don't want anyone to know your question, you can always DM me on any of my socials. <laughs> so that's why my socials are there in the link tree for you guys. So wherever you guys are, when this video reaches you, my friends, I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Namaste.